for many years I had heard about how politicians were corrupt and governments were corrupt. I guess I didn't really understand what exactly that meant or how a person was corrupt or like what that was really uh, for many years. So I thought I'd make this video just kind of going over the basics of how it works, some simple examples of how corruption might work uh, in case it helps you understand things a bit better. So I would say in general, a definition of corruption might be anything where like the government is manipulated or it's not run the way it's supposed to be run. Very simple terms, the government, uh, there's elected leaders, like members of Congress, they're elected by the people that live around them. And they go to Congress and they vote for things that would be in the best interest of the people that voted them in, or in the best interest of the whole country. So corruption is anything that makes that process not work the way it's supposed to. Usually it's because members of Congress get paid money by somebody to do what that person wants them to do, rather than what everyone wants them to do. Um, companies usually have a lot more money than individual people, so it's a lot of times companies are paying off uh, politicians. So a couple of simple ways that that might happen. So say, uh, for example, I would say in general, a country does not want to go to war, right? Uh, lots of people die. It's very expensive. Um, it's, it's a huge problem. Lots of trauma, everything. So let's just say that you happen to be the CEO of a company that makes weapons for war, like Lockheed Martin. It actually wouldn't be too bad if you went to war, right? So let's say that you become vice president. And then you really start pushing to go to war, even for kind of dumb reasons. So let's say the country then goes to war. Well, Lockheed Martin's pretty happy about that because they're going to make a crap ton of money over the next several years because they get they make tons of weapons, tanks, you know, whatever. Um, then let's say when you're done being vice president, you just go work for them. They pay you millions of dollars and that's that. So obviously that's not in the best interest of the country, but that person got rich. That company got rich. That dynamic is corruption. Or let's say the EpiPen. You might remember several months ago, the EpiPen increased in price by over 400% for basically no reason. So why'd that happen? Well, because the company that makes it, the pharmaceutical company, wanted to make a lot of money. Um, one corruption aspect of that from the government is the CEO of that company that makes the EpiPen, her dad is a senator. And her dad really pushed legislation to put EpiPens in every public school in the whole country. So maybe it's a good thing that EpiPens are in every school, but it's pretty suspicious that he does that and then his daughter jacks up the price of EpiPens. She just made a crap ton of money because of something her dad forced to happen. So that's those are some kind of common dynamics. So what are some other ways that people end up actually getting the money? Well, if you want to be a member of Congress, you got to run a campaign. They're very expensive. Uh, if you want to stay a member of Congress, you got to run a campaign. They're very expensive. And uh, simply put, I mean, if I if I run for Congress and I've got enough money to pull up t put up two billboards, and my competitors got three hundred billboards, he'll probably win. People will have seen him. He will have uh, heard of him. I'll probably lose, regardless of what our ideas are or anything else, just because there's so much more exposure. So you need a lot of money to run a campaign. Uh, so donations to campaigns is probably the most easy and straightforward way people get corrupted. Now, there are limits on how much people and companies can donate, but there are very easy ways around that, especially these days. Um, due to a Supreme Court ruling called Citizen United, people can donate as much money as they want to something called political action committees or PACs. So you might donate $100 million to a PAC who doesn't technically support Hillary Clinton, but all they do is you know run ads for her and pr try to promote her to get elected, right? Um, you could have all of your – you can donate as much money as you want to a uh, party. So you could donate all you want to the Republican Party, but that doesn't mean that that money actually gets spread out evenly. It could all just go to one candidate. Um, I would say other pretty straightforward ways are that uh, someone might go work for a company after they quit Congress. So, for example, Jason Chaffetz right now just announced at, at what is probably the height of his career that he's going to quit Congress. Uh, he's not going to run again. I don't know why he's doing that. A wild guess I have is that he's going to go try to make a crap ton of money being a lobbyist for a company. He knows a lot of people in uh, very powerful positions in the country. And he can represent some – whatever co company he wants. He could go back to New Skin and try to deregulate pharmaceuticals even more. 
he could go, you know, he could work for anybody and uh, they can pay him as much money as they want because he'll just be an employee. Whereas right now they can't pay him because he's a member of Congress. So that's a lot of what people do. There's been people try to pass legislation saying, well, you can't be a lobbyist for 10 years after Congress. I think a law like that would be pretty good. Nothing like that exists right now. Uh, other ways people could get corrupted. Uh, people don't necessarily pay them money, but they give them other things like, hey, it's expensive to fly from California to Washington, D.C. to do your job in Congress and you live in California. Why don't you just take my private jet every time? So that might save a person thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. You know, they didn't actually get the money, but they, you know, they saved that much money. Um, they might uh, get various lifestyle enhancements uh, because of their position. There's other, a lot more creative ways. I remember years ago hearing about a member of Congress who would play poker once a week with various powerful members of the country. And uh, he was super good at poker. He would win tens of thousands of dollars every week. And, you know, I don't know why his buddies kept playing with him, but uh, they just lost tons and tons of money without fail. One of my favorite examples is a guy who was uh, a member of Congress and he was caught by the FBI with $90,000 of cash in his freezer. Obviously, he was trying to hide it. Um, it was kind of like bribery, money. So he would, you know, pass various laws in certain ways. I have no idea why he put it in his freezer, but uh, I'm glad he did because it's pretty funny. So uh, the main thing is we don't – if someone is corrupted, they're getting paid off in some way. We don't know why they're passing laws. Is it just for their own personal interest and the interest of whoever's paying them off, or is it in the interest of everybody? Fairly recently, in the last few months, a law was put forth in the Senate to allow the United States to import uh, pharmaceuticals, so medicine, from Canada. The idea was that this would make medicine way cheaper to the average American, and we already import tons of other stuff. So uh, a dude named Cory Booker, who's normally kind of on the side of things like that, voted against it. And so, I mean, we don't know why. Did he vote against it because it was actually in the best interest of the country? Or did he vote against it because pharmaceutical companies have paid his campaign over $100,000? Same thing with uh, Hillary Clinton with her Wall Street speeches. People were concerned about that because at the time there was a lot of concern. We need to start getting serious about regulating banks. They caused a lot of problems in the recession recently. We, we need to handle this. And Hillary Clinton said, yo, yeah, I'll, I'm totally on board to do that and I will do it. A lot of people were sort of skeptical about that because she's been paid millions of dollars by banks to give speeches. Now, the idea is the speech is kind of a legitimate way for banks, banks to give her money. No speech is really worth $250,000. It was just a cover, uh, a way to pay her money. Uh, I would say uh, one of the biggest uh, corrupting influences would be Mr. Trump himself. He had openly admitted on the campaign trail during a debate that he pays off politicians, pays off all sorts of things to get things to work the way he wants that would be personally beneficial to him and his company. Um, almost in a way of bragging about it. He was saying, hey, I understand how this works because I, I do it and I'll totally be the one that shuts it down. I think that's kind of a <laughs> ridiculous argument. Um, he's Him and his family are already benefiting quite a lot from his political position now. For example, uh, the Kellyanne Conway, who works with the Trump administration, told people, go and buy Ivanka Trump's clothing from uh, where, you know, wherever it's sold. I mean, that's crazy. That's the, that's the government straight up saying, buy this person's uh, product so that they can make money. Um, similarly with Ivanka, recently a government-run website uh, promoted her book. That's coming out. So again, we have the government itself promoting a private person's uh, money-making venture. So would would she have sold as many copies if the government itself isn't promoting her book? Probably not. So that's what corruption is. It's 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 getting all over the place. And so we just wonder, like, is the president doing something because it's good for the country? He genuinely believes that. Or is it because he stands to make money in some way? Now, he has properties and hotels and things and all over the world. That's what his business involves. Uh, but you have to wonder, is he going to play nice with the president of the Philippines, a person who is encouraging his citizens to murder certain groups of people, which is, I mean, that is astounding to me that the president of the Philippines is doing that. 
Donald Trump uh, would like to build a hotel in the Philippines. I, th I believe he may even have one there already. So is what the, whatever kind of negotiations or the conversation is like with that man, is it impacted because Donald Trump stands to make money in that country and stands to lose money if he pisses off the president of the Philippines? These are the reasons why that clause is put in the Constitution that you can't have ties to foreign governments or uh, be influenced in other ways. You have to be looking out for the best interest of the country. So that's kind of the basics of how corruption works. It's compl I mean, what are we all going to do about it? I would say simply, uh, that's a big question. I would say don't vote people in who you know are corrupt. Um, try not to do business dealings with people that you know with companies that you know are paying off other people, um, demand ethical inquiries into things that are going in, support legislation, call your members of Congress, tell them to support legislation that curbs corruption. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of other things you can do. Those are just kind of the, the basic idea. Well, anyway, I hope this is sort of a reasonable introduction to corruption. Uh, this is obviously a new YouTube channel. If you would like these types of ideas propagated, uh, sharing them on social media like Facebook and Twitter and Reddit and all that is very helpful. If you don't really feel comfortable doing that, if you dislike the video or comment on it, that makes it more likely to show up in YouTube's search results. So anyway, thanks for your support.